the young engineers of today. How was everybody's weekend? Have a good time? Do anything exciting? Got two goods in a crate. Awesome. That's promising, most certainly. Another good. Well, excellent, excellent. I'm glad to hear it. I uh, <laughs> I spent it working. Uh, <laughs> I know you're responding to my question, Tate, but it just looked like uh, you you were responding to the fact that I was working all weekend. It's like well, fine, okay. Battlefield Four all weekend. Nice. Um, no, it was it was all right. Like I said, I just spent it working. <laughs> Working my other job, it's exciting. Anyway, glad to hear you guys had a good weekend. Um, we're gonna. Is it? I haven't. I haven't experienced the uh, the Mac version, so I, I didn't know. But interesting, interesting. Um. Gotcha. Um, anyway, yeah, we're going to continue with uh, HTML like we were doing last week. Uh, we got sort of familiarized with it in a sense, uh, sort of. We we were, I introduced you to it. That's, I think, probably the best way to put it. Um, we didn't end up actually doing much with it. We created our silly little web page. Um, so there is that. Uh, let's see here. Let me see if I can't get it opened up again. I had index with you guys, I believe. Well, I'll go ahead and open this up with Notepad and see what it... Uh, yes, yes, yes. This was the one that I did with you guys uh, because of the whole paragraph thing. Um, anyway, let's spend a little bit of time reviewing what we went over last week because I know it was it was a few days ago, so it would probably be good to spend some time going over what we did. Um, like I said, we were spending time working with HTML. Uh, we talked about what HTML is, hypertext markup language, first appeared on the internet in 1991, became the global standard in 2000, and now it's on every single website ever. Um, HTML5 is the new hot version that everybody's super excited about. Uh, we talked about how HTML works. Basically, it's just a raw document text file that gets uploaded to uh, servers and then the servers send that text file and any images or videos or whatever that might be with it to your browser. Your browser translates it in real time and you get to look at it and it's pretty cool. Um, uh, no, you don't need to download anything, Carson, no worries. Um, but uh, yeah, so the nice thing about creating anything with uh, with HTML is you can use a plain text editor and you can use a browser and you've already got all the tools you need in order to be able to start creating web pages, websites. Um, now you might remember me saying that that's part of the reason why browsers might display things differently or faster or slower than other browsers is because of the fact that they translate the stuff in real time uh, and also that there are multiple different ways to do it so it is entirely possible for one browser to do it maybe more efficiently or uh, maybe less efficiently but safer or maybe less efficiently but more memory, uh, you know, uh, efficient uh, or maybe, you know, whatever. Oh, no worries, Liam. It happens. We're just reviewing right now anyway. Uh, hope you're doing well. Um, but yeah, so essentially that's just sort of what we went over last week as far as like sort of what HTML is. Now, again, uh, because browsers do a lot of the heavy lifting for us, we can just use a plain text editor in order to edit these uh, web pages, which is what you guys were messing around with uh, last week. So, you know, if you have Windows, you can use Notepad. If you have Macintosh operating system you, or Mac OS, uh, you can use TextEdit. Um, just make sure that if you use TextEdit, make sure that you set it to plain text mode. Uh, it defaults to, 
it defaults to not plain text. What happened to this? There we go. Okay. Oh, I guess those slides disappeared. Anyway, um, then we spend some time looking at the actual HTML structure itself. It was... Sure it does. I mean, it saves like anything else. Um, what do you mean it doesn't save your code? Uh, that shouldn't have happened. Uh, something might have gone wrong when did the same. Th yeah, there's something weird going on there. Because text said it should totally work. It might be, okay, well, that works as well. Uh, anyway, um, we spent some time looking at the, the actual syntax of HTML, just like a little bit of time. Uh, you remember maybe that the HTML is made up of tags, which are these things in angled brackets. Uh, most tags in HTML are paired. That is to say that there is a beginning and an ending tag to tell the computer where a particular bit of formatting begins and ends. In this case, since they're the HTML tags, uh, it tells the computer where the HTML begins and ends, the actual HTML script itself. I think I said that correctly. Anyway, um, we can always tell an opening bracket because, or an opening tag, uh, because it's just the name of the tag, and we can always tell a closing tag because it is the same name except it has a forward slash in front of it. Whoops, a forward slash in front of it. The forward slash signifies that it is a closing tag, at least for paired tags. Unpaired tags um, will oftentimes contain the forward bracket as well, even though there's no opening tag to pair with it. Uh, don't worry about it. You know, it just means that the it's just a it's just a syntax thing they do with with uh, unpaired tags. Um, not all unpaired tags are going to be like that, just because of course, you know, you got to make things difficult when you're coding and you can't keep everything consistent always and forever, just because things sometimes turn out weird. Uh, but at any rate, uh, yes, most HTML is paired tags that consist of an op uh, of an opening and a closing tag. We spend some time going over what those tags are. Uh, remember, the, the HTML tags denote the beginning and end of an HTML document. We've also got, oh, here we go. Um, we've also got the head tag, which gives you information about the document, like a title and style across the entire page. Uh, so if you wanted to create some basic text formatting that would apply across the entire page, you could put that into the head tag area. The body tag contains a lot of your um, HTML if you're going with a more pure HTML uh, setup um, because it's going to contain everything that goes inside of the actual window. Um, that people view when they look at your web page. Uh, so the, the, the sort of the meat of your web page, so to speak. Uh, sometimes, you know, you might have something like a, like a neat little JavaScript widget or a game or a Unity thing or whatever. Uh, a lot of times it gets placed into the head tag. So, you know, if you're going with a HTML sort of mix, so you're going with HTML and JavaScript or HTML and CSS and Unity or whatever, HTML and Silverlight for who knows why, um, you're probably going to have a little bit more of your HTML in the head tag. Uh, and then a lot of your code is not going to be contained within this HTML file itself. It's just basically going to be more of a, just kind of like a vehicle. It's going to say, hey, build just a basic blank white web page and then load in the Unity thing. And that's probably going to be like the extent of your HTML file, that sort of thing. So that's probably going to contain more stuff in your head uh, than it is uh, head tags, than it is in the body tags. But 
if you're creating something that's very, very uh, HTML heavy, um, then you're going to have a lot of stuff in your body tags. Anyway, uh, we went on over some other stuff beyond that. Let me go ahead and pull this up. We went over the title tag, which basically puts a title inside of the tab or the, the, the window bar of a website that you're visiting. So if we were to open this up right now, like let's go ahead and double click on our index.html, pull up the web page again. So as you can see, the title of it is Young Engineers of Today, just like what I have here in my title tag, Young Engineers of Today. Then we talked a little bit about head tags, header tags, excuse me, header tags. Um, already the confusion between head tags and header tags is Uh, hmm. You don't uh, you don't have like the file at all. Okay. Uh, does it open up in a browser? Is that what's going on? Okay. Right click on it and select Open with, and then select Notepad. Um, you you can. Uh, there's also the video from last Wednesday is up on the YouTube, uh, so you could follow that as well, just to sort of get a more in depth, maybe look at what what we've been doing. Uh, granted, the review I just did covered pretty much all of the material that we went over on Wednesday, um, just more quickly. But yeah, the, whichever you prefer. Um, you don't have to, strictly speaking type all this out anyway. Uh, if you're the sort of person who learns better by taking notes, then do that. If you're the sort of person who learns better by doing, then feel free to follow along. I do it and I invite you guys to follow along because that's mostly how I learn best, is by doing the stuff as well. Um, but you know, if that's not like your preferred style of learning, I'm not gonna make you do it. Unlike, like sometimes we want to have like an end product to be able to show people, uh, in which case I would encourage you to do stuff alongside. But this is not one of those cases. This is more just getting used to HTML and uh, learning how the syntax works and everything like that. So I'm not going to require you guys to, to you know, make this sort of stuff, strictly speaking. And did that work for you, Jacob? Excellent. All right, so yeah, that goes for everybody. Um, once you've created it as an HTML file, you'll notice that it's got the, the icon of your browser of choice. If you double click on it, it's gonna open up your browser. However, if you right click on it and open with and select your plain text editor, it should open up in that as an HTML file like I have here. Ah, I know, it's totally easy to read. Where did, there we go, that was weird. I like send it away. I never knew that was a thing. Can I send this away? Yes, I can. What? I'm learning new things too. Oh yeah, yeah, it totally is. Uh, it's the character I probably play the most of in Overwatch. I'm one of those guys. Nice. Yeah, Genji and Zenyatta are my uh, are my two most played, and then Reinhardt, because you know, big giant shield and throwing fire, and well, to each their own. I enjoy it, but I can understand why people may not like it. Um, but yes, okay. So we talked about the title tags. We talked about um, what they do. Uh, we also, I want to mention this again, uh, because we, we deal primarily with paired tags in HTML, it's important to note that there is an order to when you close your paired tags. And that is, you close your paired tags so that they're nested. 
So the last tag to be opened is always the first tag to be closed. So this title, we've got an HTML opening tag, a head opening tag, and a title opening tag. The way we close those is our title opening tag, then our head opening tag, then our HTML, or uh, excuse me, title closing tag, head closing tag, and then HTML closing tag. And that's just so, um, you can think of it this way. Um, we're telling the computer where the HTML begins and ends, right? We're telling the computer where the title begins and ends, right? It doesn't make any sense if we tell the computer that the HTML ends before the title ends. Because what's all that stuff after the HTML? It's just nonsense. It's gibberish. It doesn't make any sense. So the computer is not going to know what to do with that kind of thing. So we have to make sure that we close things in reverse order that we open them. So HTML head title and then title head HTML. Uh, that made sense. That was sort of a weird way to explain it, but I, I just wanted to ensure that you know I covered that part again. So yes, we spent some time talking about the header tag, which provides large, bold text. Basically, that's what the header tag does, is it provides large, bold text on your page. It provides titling for individual sections, not to be confused with the title of the page. Boy, this, uh, this nomenclature, let me tell you. Uh, so we've got titles for individual sections, which we can use the header tag to then uh, sort of create large text to separate those areas. Now also of note is the header tag is super simple. It's just H and then a number. In this case, H1. H1 provides the largest text. The larger the number is, the smaller the text is. So we can go all the way down to H6. So let me just do that to, uh, to show you guys exactly how the, the size decreases as the number increases. and one of the coder's greatest allies, copy and paste. So I'm just going to go ahead and save this file because remember, uh, in order to um, update a web page, you have to save the base HTML file and then you just have to uh, reload the page. So I'm going to hit F5 real quick. Pink. And look at that. We've got, if we look back at our HTML, we've got header 1, header 2, header 3, header 4, header five and header six. We've got six highs here and they decrease in size. So header one, header two, header one, header two, header three, header four, header five, and header six. And as you can see, right around header five and header six, um, the text becomes smaller than just the basic body text. And that's for various reasons, I guess, just for just sort of uh, formatting and, and, and design things. I don't believe H7 actually exists, but for scientific purposes, let's go ahead and see what happens. Yep, see, that doesn't mean anything. So it just ignored those tags and then put the text in between those tags um, onto the page. So unfortunately, H7 is not a valid size. H7 is too small. S-M-O-L, too small, small. But yeah, anyway, um, now let's actually take a look at, oh, one more thing, the paragraph tag, P. Simply formats it so it has a blank line before and after the paragraph. So this one here is a single paragraph, and this one here is a second paragraph. And if we look at it, they've got the 
the angle brackets and the P for that. And you might also notice that this next one starts immediately after the first one. So here's our big long paragraph that we got right here. And then here's our second smaller one right here. And there it is right there, a line afterwards, because paragraph will automatically format it so that there is a blank line before and after um, whatever is inside of the paragraph tags. So, so far we know how to create just like plain text stuff in different sizes. But we can also mess around with style tags. Style tags allow you to, well, stylize your text. Um, and they're the same kind of style tags that you'll use uh, when you're editing something with a Word document. Um, granted, you're not going to be using style tags when you're editing a Word document. You're going to be highlighting text and then clicking the button that makes it do the thing that you want it to do. But you can do the same thing in HTML, you just need to use style tags. So for instance, uh, the first one, first style tag, is the bold style tag, which will make text bold. No surprise there. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and, and uh, make something bold. We'll start it out this way. Start it out with a paragraph and we'll say, this is going to be bold text. Ah, uh, yep. You got it, Jacob. And if we reload the page, hey, look, this is going to be bold text. Nothing yet, but if we place, and remember, I'm going to nest these tags. So the B is going to start after the P, but it's going to close before the closing P. So P, B, and then B, P. And that should make everything bold in here. In fact, I'm just, I'm so confident I'm going to delete that goal or uh, that going to and B. So it should just say, this is bold text. So I'm going to save, hit F5. This is bold text. Hey, look at that. So B makes your text bold. Next, we've got italics, which, you know, lovely, lovely italics. So if we want to italicize text, we're just going to go ahead and italicize this text. We're going to use the I tag. This is italicized text. And you'll notice that I'm separating these with like a line of white space. So I've got the bold text and then the line of white space and the italicized text. I don't have to do that. I can actually just put it all in one line. I can put this whole thing on one line and the computer will still be able to interpret it. However, I am doing this so that I can read it more easily. And that's always a good thing to do as a coder or a scripter or whatever is to format your work so that you can read it more easily, so that others can read it more easily, so that you can parse what exactly is going on. So be sure to do that. You know, Be sure to format it so that it's easier for you to read. Make your own life easier. Here we go. We've got italicized text here. Finally, we've got the underline tag. I say finally, but there are a bunch of others, but this is the last style tag that we're going to go over for this particular purpose. So we've got the underline tag, which is a U. So P, U, this is underlined text. U, P. Save and reload. And look at that. We've got bold text, italicized text, and underlined text. Bam. Super exciting. Look at that. Oh, birds waking up out there. So yeah, we can uh, we can underline text for emphasis or for book titles. I like italics for emphasis because you know I'm I'm a dramatic person like that. But ah uh, yes, the strike through text. I forgot about that. Strike through tag. Excuse me. The strike through tag isn't really anything that's used very much anymore. Um, because you're not really going to be able to edit somebody's HTML page or HTML uh, file on the fly. Like if they want you to look at their web page and like you want to make corrections to it. Um, you, 
it would be nice to use strike through in order to show them what you've changed about the page. But that's kind of like the extent of it. And most of the time, you're not going to be, like I said, you're not going to be editing somebody's HTML file directly. Uh, you might be, you know, I don't know, you might be prototyping changes and stuff like that, which you can do through a browser. Um, you can you can actually open up the, the source on a page, um, which I believe is F12? Yes, F12. And it will give you, you know, the source. Um, which it'll probably actually do here. Let's see here, F12. Yep. Block script execution. Ah, let's see. We'll close that because it's not like you can mess around with that on Google Sites. And we've already got the we've already got the source here. Anyway, so those are those are some style tags. Now it's important to note that we can say something like uh, this. This text is absolutely nuts. So what do you think is going to happen there? F12 isn't working for you? Um, for, it might not work on everybody's computer. Uh, you can always go over to uh, the options, and I believe there's more tools. Man, they've changed this around so much, I don't even know anymore. Oh, let's see here. Uh, yeah, um, okay, so what you can do is you can go to, yes, cop my Google search, uh, you can go up to the three dots up here, more tools, and then developer tools, which is also control shift I, and then elements here will list not only all of the, uh, did you save it as an HTML file, because that's something you got to do, Grayson. Um, when you saved it as an HTML file, did you select all files first instead of text documents? And it just, what, it won't open into Google Chrome at all? Will it open up Notepad, your file on Notepad? What, will, what's it, what does it do? Okay, right click on it and select open with and see if there isn't like a browser listed there like Chrome or something like that. Uh, excellent question, Jacob. Um, Certainly in basic HTML, yes. However, there's like CSS and stuff like that, which you can do all kinds of crazy stuff to your text with. Um, so this is very good for you know basic, more basic uh, pages and things like that. Uh, whereas CSS is very good. It's called uh, it's short for cascading style sheets. It's be rapidly becoming like the most popular option to provide. Um, 
customization and sort of aesthetics to a web page. Uh, that's what I was explaining before, Aiden. You go up to the three dots up here in the, to the control menu. You go to more tools and you go to developer tools and it'll pop it up. Let's see, you can, are we gonna use it? Um, I'm gonna hope, I hope that I can, we can spend some time talking a little bit about CSS. Um, not today, but probably like Wednesday or something like that. Because uh, that would be kind of neat to be able to explore some of the, some of the uh, style and kind of stuff that you can do with CSS. Again, very, very introductory. So, you know, don't, don't expect miracles, but just as a sort of a primer. Oh, uh, Safari is completely different. I'm not entirely sure uh, how you do it in Safari, unfortunately. Yep, definitely, Jacob. Yeah, you can do stuff like that with CSS and everything. Uh, okay, so, yeah, so I, as I'm sure you guys have probably, probably already uh, guessed, I added bold, italicized, and underlined text. So you can combine styles in order to create um, even more stylized text. And again, note that Bold is opened the uh, first, and then italics, and then italics is closed first, and then bold is closed. So last open, first closed. Oh yes, yeah, so there's the line break tag. Line break allows you to well, stick a line break into your code. And it's different from the paragraph line break because the paragraph is one whole blank line in between paragraphs, whereas the line break is just simply, it's like a carriage return. You just send it to the next line. So if we were to go, I'm going to put a line break right, and then we use the line break tag, which is just br, As you can see, I'm going to put a line break right here. Now, you'll notice that the line break tag is unpaired. There's just a single tag, just the BR tag. And that's because we don't need to, um, we don't need to pair up a line break, to ta uh, line break tag to tell the computer where it begins and ends, right? A line break is simply just the same thing as if I pressed enter on the keyboard and continued typing. It's exactly what a line break is. So we don't need, like I said, we don't need to tell the computer where that begins and ends. Um, a line break is a discrete thing. We don't tell, you know, we don't we don't tell a computer where the letter P begins and ends. We just type a P and it's done. Uh, this is just a fancy way of hitting the enter key, ensuring that something is formatted exactly the way you want it to be. Um, it should actually allow you to, uh, yeah, to spend some time, let's see here. On some of them you can. Ah, uh, no, see, that's, uh, that's a console for scripting.
you can do some yeah you can do some uh, minor changes here and there uh, nothing like you know you might be able to spe expect oh it doesn't work for you oh that's unfortunate No, so do I. Nope, just F12. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think I think your mileage may vary with that. It depends on how your keyboard is set up. Uh, it depends on whether or not you have any options enabled to use the function keys for alternative things. Um, I know for mine, I can do that. Uh, like I can use the, the function keys for volume, and I can use them to start playing music, and I can change the lights on my keyboard and stuff like that. But again, that's, that's specific to my keyboard. Your keyboard might be different. It might uh, default to you know pulling up the Windows menu on F12 or something like that, you know, or it might, whatever. Uh, there could be any number of things. Um, yeah. Now, here's a nice little thing about what uh, HTML can do. HTML can automatically create lists for you. It's, I say automatically, you still do a lot of the work, but it formats it for you nicely. So, like, you know, when you're creating a, a list in uh, Word or something like that, and you want to you want to have this nice formatted list where everything's automatically indented and it has like the bullet points and all that kind of stuff. Well, HTML can do that as well. So we've got two different types of lists. We've got ordered lists and we've got unordered lists. Ordered lists are denoted with an OL. Unordered lists are denoted with a UL. Let me make the font bigger so it'll be easier for you guys to read. How's that? Is that better? Excellent. So we've got ordered lists and unordered lists. And there's really only one difference between the two. Unordered lists, oh, excuse me, ordered lists are lists that just look like this. You know, they got one, two, three. Unordered lists are just lists that look like this and they just have bullet points. That's all. That's literally the only difference between the two. Ordered lists, each point starts with a number, Unordered lists, each point starts with a bullet point. And the way you add stuff to it is real simple like. So let me go ahead and put a line break between these. Uh, carriage return, whatever you want to call it. Now, the way we add an item into a list is with the list item tag. That's what li is. Li means list item. And each item in your list is going to have a list item tag. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll say um, cat dog. Oh wait, no, this is an order list. Uh, let's say morning. I don't want to give people the wrong idea. Noon and night. So now we've got an order list with three list items, morning, noon, and night. And we can add more list items if we wanted to, we just have to make sure that they're in the list item tags. Um, let's go ahead and save this, and we'll reload this page. Hey, look at that, morning, noon, and night, nice and ordered, with the one, two, and the three. So now with an unordered list, we can do the same thing. We can go list elements, or list item, list item, List item, we can go like a uh, cat, dog, fish. So now we got three items in an unordered list. So if I were to save this and reload it, hey, look at that, cat, dog, and fish, all with nice bullet points next to them. And again, each one is denoted with the list item tags. That is the super important part about all this, is the list item tags. What about unicorn? Well, it's easy enough to add. List item, unicorn, 
first item. Done. Save. Reload. Hey, look, there it is. Unicorn. Yeah. So not too bad, right? Well, uh, let's see here. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, now that we've done that, I'm going to spring a little quiz on you guys. I know. I know. I'm the worst person ever. Uh, don't worry, you're not going to be judged for it at all. I'm not going to be asking for answers. Like, I just want you guys to think about the answers to these questions. Maybe write them down on a notebook if you want, or type them out to test them out. But I am by no means requiring you to do anything specific right now, just other than think about the answers to these questions. This is purely meant to be a way to sort of help reinforce this information in your head. That's really all it is. So don't sweat it. There's no way to like mess it up or anything. So think about how you would give your page a header and a welcome message. Well, you know, a, a, a big, big set of text like, uh, like this right here. And then, once you've done that, write a short paragraph about yourself below the heading. No, or think about how you might write a short paragraph about yourself below the heading. Now notice how the paragraph is italicized. Maybe that's the key word I want you guys to focus on. So you have the formatting, so it has like the blank, the, the single blank line before and after. Next one's going to take a minute. So I'll just go to it now. Bam want you to think about how you would make text that looks exactly like this, exactly like this. So the line breaks and everything. give you guys a couple extra minutes for that because that can take a minute just because there's a lot of typing if you are in fact typing it up. Okay, now present an unordered list of three places you'd like to visit, or think about how you might do that.
my phone going off. Apologies. <laughs> Just like, oh, okay, now's, now's a good time. <laughs> uh, all right, so once you've done the unordered list, present an ordered list of your three favorite sports or video games or pastimes or whatever. And the lists will take a minute because they can be pretty uh, pretty time intensive. So I'll let you guys sit on those for a minute. Once that's done, if you've typed it up, go ahead and upload your HTML file and check your web page and see how it looks. Earthbound and Team Fortress 2. Excellent. Earthbound, man. It's a game I've been wanting to play recently. I just don't have uh, I don't have the proper emulation for it. So now if everything was alright. It's pretty fantastic. Uh, if everything was all right, um, maybe you like Team Fortress 2, but not Overwatch. Interesting. Okay. Um, yeah, that's fine. Um, the video should be up probably late tonight, uh, early tomorrow morning. Certainly, it should. You should be able to see it tomorrow. Not really. I, I can't imagine that they're rivals. They both target different audiences. Uh, they both have different uh, goals, I think. They're similar, I'll grant you that, but I, I wouldn't say that they're rivals. CSGO, nice. Uh, nah, I gotta disagree there, but Again, to each their own. Rainbow Six Siege? Oh, yeah. That was one I wanted to play, but I never had the, the money for it uh, at the time. And it, uh, the user base has dropped off, I guess, pretty precipitously. So I just can't really justify paying the money to buy it at this point. But oh well. So this is the HTML I used to create this page. So essentially the answers to these questions. Are we listing our favorite games? Uh, it, that was that was one of the questions for the list. Um, so yeah, I just sort of turned into everybody mentioned what they like. <laughs> GTA Five. Well then, well well. Um, so yeah, headers pretty easy. It's just the H and the number. And I remember the the larger the number is, the smaller the text is. <laughs> Excellent question. Excellent question. Um, the paragraph tags, pretty simple. So, so far so good. Now this one was the one that took a minute um, just because there were a lot of formatting tags. Now remember the break, 
uh, line break tags are unpaired. So there's actually two line break tags and they're separate. So I had them two different colors here. Um, but yeah, they're definitely two separate things. Uh, yeah, you could do that all on one line too. You don't have to do it like I did. I did it for readability sake, but you can do it all on one line. Then we got our unordered list, place one, place two, and place three. And then we got our order list, thing one, thing two, and thing three. Same thing as onward, just with an OL instead of a UL. Pretty easy, pretty simple, pretty simple. This is what the full document might look like. Maybe, maybe, might, you know? So we got HTML, small. Is this small document. HTML, we got our head tags, here's the start of the body tag, and then we got our header, paragraph, our formatted text, our unordered list, our ordered list, and then closing body tag, closing HTML tag. Bam! Simple as. So that, and, and again, we can do this all on, you know, without any spaces or anything like that. <laughs> I am invincible! Or bulletproof! Who touched Sasha? That uh, was actually pretty bad. Um, yeah, I wish I could do voices like that. Uh, at any rate, yeah. So this is a this is a note about white space. These two are equivalent. They'll both produce the same page. It's just this one's easier to read. So that's why I choose to do this. You could do this if you wanted to. If this is easy for you to read. Just go ahead and do that. But I like this. It helps me visualize. Um, what my what my final page is going to look like a little bit better, and separate all the different stuff out. So yeah, that does it for lesson one. Lesson two is like adding links and pictures and stuff like that, uh, and then like a maybe a little bit, maybe 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 a little bit of CSS. Uh, we'll see. Hopefully, we'll have the time to do that because that would be pretty cool. Um, because then we could mess around more with the formatting stuff. Uh, otherwise, that's going to do it for today, so I'll go ahead and do the poll questions. And then once we're done with the poll questions, if you have any questions for me, I'll keep everything open until 8 o'clock. Then i got to go to my other one. Um, but, you know, I can, I'll be more than happy to answer any questions. Otherwise, we can break for the next couple of days and we'll meet up on Wednesday. So first poll question incoming.